The pin that I want to output the PWM signal out of is pin number 44 because these pins 43 and down, actually I don't know if it's 43 is used or not, but it's these are being used for the LCD. So the one that I have immediately available is pin number 44. Yeah, I just checked. Uh, pins number 43 all the way down to the bottom are used for the LCD. So I have the 44, which is the timer channel four at my disposal. So we're, there's probably a couple things we need to do. We need to make sure that the alternate pin function is used for the pin number 44 because we don't want it to be used for general purpose IO. We want it to be used for one of these, specifically the timer one channel four. So let's take a look and see how we do that. Let's go back to the, let's go to the data sheet, the reference, and the way you select the pin that you want to use is the CCMR1 pin, which is the capture compare mode register. And that's kind of misleading, but the electronic engineers out there will probably find that this is a normal thing. So you can see that you have the output control one, output control two, or output, I'm sorry, output compare one. So you can see that you have output compare one, output compare two, and you have these PEs and FEs and CEs. And these are explained underneath the table, specifically for like the CE would be clear enable, the M would be the mode, the PE is preload enable, FE is fast enable. And as we get deeper into using these modes, these will be explained. The hint that this particular register has to do with the output or the input channels is that in the description it uses the channels can be used in input capture mode or output compare mode. So when we specify the timer one channel four, this can be used for input or output. And we'll be using these channels for receiving PWM and measuring their widths and, and periods. We can also use it for receiving other inputs for timing. You'll notice there's only a one and a two here. So we may have to go to another register to find the four and the three. Here we go. Okay, so it's the CCMR2 that we need to use for the fourth channel. And for this experiment, we're gonna set the mode, which is the OC4M. This specifies the mode for this particular pin. And it has three bits, zero to two, zero, one, and two. And we're gonna set it to one, one, zero. And it doesn't give you any information on this particular part because this is showing the fourth channel and if you want to know more about these modes, you have to actually go to the first channel because it doesn't want to repeat itself, obviously. That's probably a good, a good thing, but it gets kind of difficult to understand sometimes. So you can see that the output compare one mode, M mode, and you'll see that 110 is for the PWM mode. And all we have to do is replace all these channel ones with channel four. So PWM mode one in up counting, channel one is active, channel four is active. As long as the timer count is less than the CCR1 value. And remember that the CCR1 value is the duty cycle and the count is just the timer counting. So the channel four is active as long as the count is less than the duty cycle, else it is inactive. And since we're not using down counting, we don't have to worry about this portion of it. And really, these two modes are the same except for the down counting mode. So we could probably use this, but I'm gonna stick with this particular mode, mode one. Now that we know this, let's take a look at the program that we had before. In the PSC, we're gonna make this a lot smaller. I'm gonna go with 100. We can see what happens with that. And the ARR is the period. So I will use 100 as a period as well. So it's an easy number to understand percentages with the duty cycle. So let's put in the duty cycle. 
number and that's under under the CCR register. And let's make it a 50% duty cycle or 50 counts. If this isn't actually 50%. If I wanted 50% of let's say a 200 period, that would have to be 100. So I don't want you to con I don't want to confuse you and think that this is actually a percentage. It is if it's 50%, it would be half of the ARR value. So 25% would be 50 over here. So let's go ahead and keep this at 200 and let's make this one 100. So we get a 50% duty cycle here. So let's put in the 110 for the PWM mode. This is zero is at the zero bit location and this is at the one and the two bit location. So it's the OC1M. Let's go ahead and put that in. CCMR2, that's where the fourth channel is located. And we're going to OR equals because we're dealing with bits here. Hmm, let's see what it, what it would be called. The OC1M. Oh, I gotta use CCM. CCMR2. OC4M. And we want the 1 and the 2. Before I forget, we need to enable the GPIO. So let's do that over here. First, we need to use the reset clock and control register and the advanced high peripheral bus. Let's see, yep. So we're gonna be enabling, enabling the A GPIO port because the pin that we're looking for, the channel four pin is PA11. So it's under the GPIO A. And now we have to find its alternate function mode. So this is it here, it's one zero under the mode register. So all we need to do is turn on the number one bit and turn off the number zero bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we're gonna turn off the zero bit. So we're gonna use the and bitwise operation and the not bitwise operation, which is the tilde. And we want it to be zero. Oh wait, motor. Which one is it? It's it's number eleven. So let's find number eleven, and that's the zero, the zero place. And we'll do it again for the ones place. Okay, so we've set the GPIO, GPIO PA11 as the alternate function. The next thing is to select the actual pin or the the way it's gonna be outputting the, the PWM. And it states in the data sheet that you must enable the corresponding preload register by setting the APA compare for PE. And we can see that the output compare for PE is preload enable. So looking at that particular bit, you can see that if we put a one here, preload register on timer one, which we're, we're using timer one, CCR one enabled. Read write operations access the preload register. The value in the CCR one is loaded in the, in the active register at each update event. So what I see is the main difference between not using the preload register and using the preload register bit is that when you have a preload register, it is updated at the update event. But if you don't use that, this can be updated immediately and can be written anytime. So let's go ahead and add that to our code. Actually, I think it's in the same register. 
CCMR2. Yeah, that's there. So I can just simply add it to the end here. Don't need that other one. One really interesting aspect of this PWM is you have incredible control and you can actually output a particular polarity if, if, it's, if you want it to be active high or active low, which means that when you start out with a PWM signal, you can have it start out high and you have the duty cycle high and then it goes low to end the, the period for the PWM. Or you can have it start out low and then climb up to um, the start of the duty cycle and then go across to the period and then go back down. So we can output the polarity using the CC4P bit. So let's take a look at the CC1P description. So I'm assuming it's gonna be over, where would it be here? Let's see, over here. Here we go. So if we keep it at zero, which is probably at the reset, it'll be active high. If we wanted to start as a as a low signal and then go up to its duty cycle portion of the pulse, you'd want to set the one on that pin. Since that's already on the way I want it, it's reset for that particular pin. I want it to be a active high. So I'm going to keep this at its reset value. And the other thing we need to do is the CC4E, which is the output enable. So we want to make sure that's self-explanatory. We want, we want to make sure it enables the output on that pin. Let's see what the description says anyway. So it just states that when it's on, the signal is output on the corresponding output pin, depending on the MOE, OSSI, OSSR, OIS1, OIS1N, and CC1E bits. We're going to be affecting this particular bit, and we're going to be turning it on. Actually, that's not the one I'm looking for. It's this one right here. So we can see that one being the on state, we want to turn it on. The OC1 signal is output, which is the OC4 signal is output on the corresponding output pin depending on the MOE, OSSI, OSSR, OIS1, OIS1N, and CC1NE bits. We will be discussing the MOE in a, in, in a little bit. So this is a dependent aspect for this particular pin. So let's go ahead and turn on the CC4E in this register, the CCER register. Looking for the CC4E, here we go. Okay, now we've set that to output. Okay, so now we need to enable the MOE, which is the main output enable. And by setting one in that bit, the output compare outputs are enabled if the respective enabled bits are set. The CC4E, which is what we just set, the CC4NE in the timer one CCER register. The break and dead time register description is kind of misleading, but they, I guess they needed a place to stick this. So this is where it is. So we'll put it right below here. So we want to enable the MOE. There we go. And I think the last thing we have to do is set the UG bit in the EGR register. And this is initializing all of the registers before we start using the preload registers. And I wouldn't be too concerned why we're using the UG bit in the EGR register. Just know that this is sort of a re requirement that's needed for this function to, to work. So 
So it's the UG bit we're enabling here. 